Boxing King Media in association with Boxer and Mark Tibbs. A big fight for your lady. I just spoke to your dad. And one of the things that sticks out for me is the fact the amount of experience Shannon's got over Ebony. How concerned are you about that? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite concerning. But, you know, I've weighed, we weigh all them things up. But it's, it's on us and I've got every bit of faith in uh, Ebony Bridges' uh, strengths and are uh, uh, willing to learn and overcome experienced uh, girls like uh, like Shannon. Uh, like when I was, my first fight with Ebony was for the for the world title fight. So that girl was, uh, she had mountains of experience over Ebony also. So um, no, we haven't overlooked, uh, we ain't overlooked Shannon. Oh, I haven't overlooked Shannon. And uh, it's a real, real, real good derby, this fight. And uh, an all Australian, an all, an all Australian derby between two queens who want to be queen of Australia. So that gets my juices flowing and all. So uh, we know what we've got to do to get the win. In the adopted Australian city of Leeds as well? Ex absolutely. She loves Leeds. She's got a, I've learned more about Leeds since I've worked with Ebony, of course. And it, it's probably been, a, I guess, just over a year, you know, since March. Since March. Well, eight weeks before she won the world title. That's how long I've known uh, Ebony Bridges, yeah. When, when you fight someone when there's needle involved, obviously Ebony's had that experience with Shannon Courtney. How much of a factor does that play in this fight? Because it could get to the point where she might go divert away from the game plan. Exactly. I mean, emotions, uh, you know, emotions for, you got to control your emotions. And, uh, you know, I've drilled this into Ebony when I first started working with her because, uh, you know, our first camp, you know, we clashed ourselves at times. But, um, but uh, she's, uh, she, she, she knows she's got to control emotions with control and, uh, game plans, we can get the job done in the fashion we want and we expect to. So she knows not to go uh, a little bit of a little bit of fire is gonna we need to get us pumped, you know what I mean? And uh, and Shannon's got that experience and uh, I really believe that uh, Emily Bridges is uh, gonna go on to bigger things after Saturday night. You know when you say you've clashed what kinda can you give us a bit of an insight? Well only like only like uh, for instance um, yeah, just normal things. Uh, just normal things. I'm a little bit passionate when I'm in the gym, and I'm and I'm I'm, I'm kind of I come alive in much in, in any gym. You know, that's where I feel relaxed and nothing, nothing. I have no problems in the in the boxing gym, and uh, and I'm passionate. And uh, obviously, when I get frustrated with certain things that I expect her to do, and and she's not doing, and she does it, she gets frustrated with me with my Cockney accent. So there's an example. <laughs> I'd love to see that, Barney. I just want to quickly get your opinion uh, before I let you go, Mark. Um, Derek Chisora obviously lost at the weekend. Uh, one of the things that I think Frank Warren said was that he felt that Derek gave Tyson a better fight than Dillian White. Your views and opinions on, on that statement? Uh, Do you really disagree? It was a different fight completely. Different fight completely. Uh, Derek always gives a good account of himself, but for me, it was a workout for Tyson. It was a workout, wasn't it? Give him a bit of a beat and tell the truth. Uh, slowly but surely. You get me? Um, he beat them both, didn't he? He beat them both in, in, in clear, clear fashion. I, I can't compare Dillian White with uh, with Derek Tejora. They've both been great ambassadors for the sport and for themselves and achieved a lot and, and done very, very well for themselves. So, yeah, I can't... Uh, I can't make comparisons between that, but uh, Tyson Fury, what a, what a, I mean, for a young fighter, up and coming fighter, he's got to, they've got to look at Tyson Fury. That, uh, they've got to look at how he, he fights long, how he fights close, how he fights dirty even, if you know what you're looking at. He fights dirty, not dirty, but you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So, so the, you know, he's, a, he's an all-rounder Tyson Fury, and uh, it was marvellous to see the, the uh, it was lovely to see the two the gamesmanship between them. Lovely, when they sat down together, proper men. Two proper men, lovely. Derek Chisora, got a lot of respect for him, as like I have Tyson Fury. Complete fighter, I think, like, like you said there. Uh, one of the other things that's been hotly talked about in the last couple of days is the, the stoppage, uh, the fact that it was a referee that stopped it. A lot of people are commenting online if the, the Twitter uh, trolls were all out, uh, you know, hunting for Don Charles, saying he should have thrown the towel in. Are you watching it live as a coach? At what point do you think you would have called it off? Uh, listen, all I can say about that is uh, 
Don Charles out of every human being, trainers, every human being on this planet, boxing fans alike, road sweepers, painting decorators, electricians, and all, anyone. Don Charles is the man for Derek Chisora. He knows him best. Um, I was glad it was stopped. Put it that way. I was glad it was stopped, and it, it was going to get stopped. You know that the round before or that round. I was glad, glad, glad. I heard Tyson he was talking to the referee. Oh, wasn't he? Yeah, I was giving him say, look, have a look in, was he? I heard that. <laughs> so yeah, he got stopped at the right time. I, I mean, like I say, uh, Don Charles knows knows Derek more than any of us, and uh, knows his heart, knows what he's got left, and all of that. So yeah, it's difficult for me to say. Mark, I really appreciate your words and. Uh, all the best Saturday night. Yeah, thank you very much. Good man.